I almost got scammed again, but in Paris this time, which escalated to becoming a fugitive there somehow. These events keep coming on like fruit flies, I don't even know what to tell you all at this point. Anyways, here are the specifics. I flew over to Europe recently with my mom, you know, as a wholesome mother-daughter trip, since she rarely has any time for vacationing. But she was not prepared to enter the Hunger Games. So rip, bless her heart. Also, shout out to all the Frenchies. Average of your fashions coming straight out of Vogue. You guys are cool. But just this once, the people need to be warned about one of your particular transportation systems. Now, if you ever had the honor of riding the most noble, honest, and just bus system known as the RATP, Rat P, pass it. The name fits them. Don't give them your money. Call it a day and just say, ah, you know, today feels like a troglodyte type of day. Forget the wheels ever existed. Today seems like an impeccable day to run a 10K in 95 degree weather. Dweeb. So initially, we bought 10 tickets from one of the many stations, which to my knowledge could be used on both the bus and the train. As the bus arrived, you should have seen how crowded it was from the outside. There was no way the AQI levels were anywhere near sustainable in there. Oh, it's looking grim. A very basic tip for traveling. You always want to avoid crowded places when it comes to touristy areas. We should get on the next one. What? Don't make me cause a scene here. We don't have all day. Come on. We hopped on the crap mobile and we pulled out our tickets to swipe or scan. But there was no such machine. I redirected my attention towards the bus driver. Bonjour. We have two tickets here. He turned his head away as if he was deliberately ignoring us. Good talk then. We all have our days just a few steps in, and there were three people who came charging at us like this was some police raid, shoving the passengers aside like this was Black Friday. The lady in front pulled out her credit card reader and told us to pay 35 euros each. Why'd you come at us like sleep paralysis demons? Fortunately, the night before, I researched about the scams that were prevalent in Europe, and this happened to be one of them. Swipe your credit card. No need. We have two tickets here. It was clear that this lady initially thought we were some vacant targets who'd pay up without question, because otherwise she would have asked to see the tickets first to verify them. No, you must pay the fine. Fine. We bought these tickets today. Check the expiration dates. They're valid. We even have the receipts. She grabbed the tickets and shoved them inside her bag without a second glance. Those are no good. Pay now. I quickly recognized this abrupt, pushy, aggressive, straightforward demands and no room for questions slash explanation behavior as the way scammers usually operated. So there was nothing left to say, but no. The woman besides her stepped in and said, excuse me, you better pay up now. Back it up. If you're the bus inspectors, agents, controllers, or whatever, you already took our tickets. We don't need to pay again. Hey, you want to cause trouble? We're the police. No, you're not. And don't worry, we're getting off the bus now. I don't think so. As we turned around to leave, there was a tank of a man who had the build of Dr. Eggman deliberately blocking the way to the entrance. Who's this guy? The final boss? I started playing footsie with Peter Griffin over here, but it'd be no surprise if this guy turned out to be a part-time mannequin. I quickly looked around to scan the bus and see who else was part of the circus. Behind the three frontmen, there were six people in a row standing at the back, blocking what appeared to be the ticket scanning machine. They were wide-eyed and staring us down like they were trying to intimidate us as a group. The people who were silently looking away and trying to mind their own business were the actual bystanders. After all, that's how it is in New York too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You're all fake. Bunch of scammers. No, you're fake. You got issues. You don't need this many people to handle some bus tickets unless you're planning to gang up on them anyways. Nobody else is getting checked. It's because we're obviously foreigners that you charged at us, right? Okay, that's it. You're paying 65 each now. Assuming we'll still pay. Enough. You want proof? Here's proof. We are the police. And this man takes out the most shoddiest looking home printed paper badge. Microsoft Word looking ass. You guys are hall monitors at best. You are getting zero additional minutes of our time. Move. Oh my goodness, they must really be the police. Let's just cooperate with them. We look like the crazy ones right now. She was panicking. This obviously wasn't the ideal reaction at the moment because she was the one holding on to the bag with all our belongings. You gotta sit this one out. Give me all the tickets you have. Okay, okay, yes, here you go. This is enough, right? Boop. I don't think so. We spent 20 bucks on those tickets. Unfortunately, some of them had ripped when I grabbed them. Hey, excuse me, step back. I'm gonna call the police station and arrest you now. I thought you were the police. Do it. Call for backup. Okay. Okay, watch me. I'm calling now. The whole atmosphere of the bus became tenser than ever. She starts speaking in French, and for all I could have known, she could have been saying something like, hey, Antoine, can I get a Big Mac with chicken nuggets on the side? These two foreigners are really busting my ass here. I don't get paid enough for this. No response. Let's get real, you're just carrying that for show. There's nobody on the other end. Here, I'll do it myself. 
And boy, did she get tilted. She assumed that I was either going to call the real police or start recording the group. One of the telltale signs of scammers in the area is that they're very camera shy. Hey, no, put that away. Stop it already. Let's just give them what they asked for. I don't think you understand. They're going to make us pay another fee when we try to get off. No, why are you being like this? There's so many of them. Just give them what they want. Trust me on this. Just try to ignore them until the next stop. Also, hold your bag so tightly that it needs to be surgically removed from your body. Excuse me, why are you butting in? I'm talking to her. As we turned away, she grabbed my mom's shoulder and pulled her towards her to grab her attention again. Get your hands off her. It was clear that they were looking at her like she was a wide open door, ready to fall into pressure soon and fork up whatever she had. Okay, I know you're the ultimate peacemaker. You don't like conflict. That's fine. Not really though. But if they see you panicking from the sudden confrontation and see us quarreling, they're gonna think there's a chance to take advantage of us. Read the facade. See through the front they want us to see. She stood silent for a second, and then she spoke to the lady again. Okay, fine. Let's go to the police station together. The woman just stared at her and then ignored what she just said. Excuse me, give me both your passports right now. Oh, so you want our passports now? That's fresh. Go home. If they were to take our passports, we'd be screwed to the end of time. At that point, my mom was also convinced that these people were not the real deal. I'm not entertaining this anymore. It's time to settle this with the bus driver. We have the tickets, so we basically paid for the ride. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Let's see about that. We tried making our way to the front. The lady immediately went in between us. No, only you. Fine. But after taking one step, I realized that she was trying to separate us now. It'd be the last time we saw each other if only one of us got off this bus. Final request. We have to get in the mud, mop these people, and make our way to the front. My mom's stress levels were through the roof at this point, but she agreed. Fuck it, we're from New York, right? Language. Not the time. Bring it on! We started pushing and shoving each other on the bus. There's a whole Super Smash Brawl going on here now. The most litty bus ride you'll ever see. With some force in the end, we squeezed through Baymax and made it to the front of the bus. <coughs> Sir! Aren't you gonna do anything about these guys? This is your bus, right? The bus driver stayed silent while the lady made her way to the front and said to him, Don't let them off no matter what. He glanced at her and nodded subtly. The lady gave me a cheeky smile after that, as though she was saying, See? It took a second for me to realize that he was in on it. Damn, that's crazy. You never once thought, Oh golly, I could probably do a lot better than working with some power-hungry goons. Hey, I'm right here. You gotta let us off the next stop. You know this shit isn't right. Oh my goodness, this whole place is crazy. What are we gonna do? We're gonna be stuck here. Even the law is working with scammers. The next stop was approaching, and a couple of people were waiting there. That seemed to be the cue for all the scammers to line up and hydraulic press me to the window. Don't let this one off. Off, no matter what. This has gotten far from personal now. There was no way Ohio could compete with this, but this was the final stretch. You're about to get rocked. I signaled to my mom to get ready to bolt it through the door. Now was the time to think fast. The window looks sturdy enough. We were at the stop now. My mom got off while new people were hesitating on whether or not they should get on the bus. Don't do it. Don't give these people your business. They were really not holding back anymore. So at that instant, I put both my feet on the glass and with some leverage, I kicked off my legs with a heavy force and boom, immediately all those people fell over like a reverse domino effect. I jumped out the door, but one of the scammers grabbed my hair and she was pulling on it as hard as she could. The bus driver closed the door. Oh nah, this guy's gonna drive off dragging my body with it. My mom and that lady were playing tug of war with my hair like rent was due. And with enough brute force and some sacrifice of hair, we escaped and the bus drove away. What just happened? What happened to your jacket pocket? Looks like they ripped it during the brawl. I guess they thought my wallet was in there or something. You know, these people were on the finest of crack. You should let me hold on to the bag. With how easily you're getting into fights here, I don't think so. This is the first time I ever had to get into a fist fight in my life. I can't believe this. Consider this a win. If by a small chance they really were with the law, then we're basically fugitives. That is nothing to be proud of. I told her for the time being we should avoid the hot spots in the area. The museums, the Eiffel Tower, the Notre Dame. If they really had connections to the authorities, they would have notified them to be on the lookout. That night, I did more research about the scam. Other people had similar experiences, but it seemed like not many people really had a confrontational moment with these guys. And from the looks of it, all these controllers were bulldogs in training, and they only seemed to have gotten stricter since our last visit. Some citizens were sympathetic in saying yes, we agree that these rules have to change. I only found out afterwards that technically, this was allowed. There was no specific law against this scam, and apparently the government was okay with not stepping in here, so it wasn't illegal. And after I read that, I thought, no wonder they were so confident. But to me, it was still wrong. Fight the system. Win. This was a scam, but not a scam. And just like that, we were basically fugitives. In the end, we saved over $200. And final advice. Walk around. Get your 10k steps in. Burn more calories. Avoid big crowds. Good luck.